In this Godot 4 tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a simple first-person player controller with a melee attack that's animated like this, and that only registers hits on enemies when the mesh actually collides with the enemy, like so. If you want to skip right to the melee attack and not set up the player controller, then you can go ahead and use the timestamp in the description. Okay, so uh, in a new Godot 4 project, let's make the root node a normal node. I'm going to call it world control A. I'm going to add in a mesh instance 3D. Let's make a ground for the player to stand on. Call it ground, go to the mesh property. New plane mesh, I'm gonna make it 20 by 20, so there's room to walk around. And to give it collision, I'll go to this mesh menu, create tri mesh static body. And I'll save this scene. Now let's make the player, hit plus to create a new scene here. I'm gonna make the root node character body 3D, call it player. Let's give it a collision shape so uh, it can collide with the floor. Collision shape 3D, shape new capsule shape. And then in the transform of the capsule shape, I'm gonna assign it a Y position of one, just so that the bottom of the capsule is the origin of the player. And in order to give the player a first person view, let's attach a camera 3D node to it. And I want that to be positioned up at the top of the head, just like that. So let's save that. Let's go back over to our world. I'm gonna drag the player scene in here. You can see it sitting right over here. Uh, I'm gonna hit play, select current. And we can see that there is a view here, but there's no light. So in order to do that, we need to add an environment and a directional light in the easiest way is we can add the, the default one that's previewed in the editor here by clicking these three dots at the top of the viewport, add sun to scene, add environment to scene, and we can see that we now have light. Let's give the player some movement. I'll go to the player scene here, attach script. Make sure you have this template selected here, character body, 3D basic movement, hit create. Currently the arrow keys are bound to movement, uh, but I want to use WASD and some other custom inputs as well. So I'm gonna go to project, project settings, input map, and let's add some new actions here. Forward, back, left, right, attack, and quit. For forward, I'll do W. For back, I'll do S. For left, I'll do A. And for right, I'll do D. Attack, I'm gonna bind to left mouse button. And quit, I'm gonna bind to escape. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna use that quit key so that whenever I have the game window open, I can press escape and it'll close it out and I can get right back to the editor. Uh, so I'm going to use the process function to detect that. So if input is action just press quit, I will get the scene tree. I will quit. And then let's just go ahead and rebind these uh, the, this input direction vector. So left, right, forward, and back. So let's take a look. So I can move around now with WASD, and if I press escape, it brings me right back to the editor. So now we want to take the mouse motion of the cursor, and we want to use that to rotate the first person view around. Uh, and first, what we need to do is we need to make it so that the mouse is captured when the game is started. So I'm gonna add another function here called ready. And this set mouse mode function input.mouseMode captured will make it so that when you start it up, you can see that the cursor disappears and it's captured by the window. Uh, and then we want to use um, the input event of the cursor moving to rotate the player. And we can use another built-in function called unhandled input for that. So if event is input event mouse motion, if it's moving horizontally, so uh, the event's relative x motion, we want to rotate the entire player around the y axis, because if I click the player here, you can see if I rotate them here, that moves them left and right. So let's do that. So rotate y event relative y, and this input is radian, so we, we want this to be really small, so I'm gonna multiply it by 0.005. Uh, 
event. Oh, sorry, it's supposed to be X. Yeah, horizontal, there we go. Okay, and for uh, up and down, we are gonna want to rotate the camera up and down, not the entire player. So let's get a reference to the camera. At on ready bar camera equals camera 3D. And then here we'll do camera dot, I'm just gonna copy all of this here. And it's gonna be rotate X and the relative will be Y. So now we can look up, down, left, right, but you'll notice that if you continue to go up or down, you can kind of wrap back around. So what we want to do is we want to clamp that. So camera.rotation.x equals clamp camera.rotation x and uh, a this takes in radians. So let's let's say we'll clamp it at like a negative 45 degree angle and a 45 degree angle, which in radians is pi over four. Uh, pi over four. Okay. So now I cannot wrap around. So that's pretty good. So our movement is all set up. Now let's get to adding in the weapon. So if I go back to the 3D view, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to view. I'm gonna create two viewports here. Uh, I'll select the camera one of them, hit preview, and so here we've got the camera view here, and then we've got the normal editor view over here. Uh, on the camera, I'm going to add a node 3D, call it weapon pivot, and then give it a mesh instance 3D, and call it weapon mesh. And now here you could import a weapon mesh maybe that you have created. I'm just going to be using a box mesh here. So I'll go to the mesh, new box mesh, uh, transform, change the scale, break that chain, x to 0 0.1, z to 0 0.1. Uh, and then let's move it forward here. So you can see the player view of it here. Uh, I'm going to want it to kind of sit down here, create like an idle animation. So let's move it down. You don't want it to be far from this capsule. That looks pretty good. I'm just going to add some rotation to it. Okay, that's not bad. So now in order to add animations, I'm going to go to the player node and I'm going to give it an animation player. Animation, new, idle animation. Uh, so let's make the idle animation like a three second animation. I'm going to make it autoplay on load. And I'm going to make it a looping animation. And I'm going to go to the weapon pivot, transform. I'm going to key the rotation here at zero seconds, create a reset track, that's fine. And then I'll go to the weapon mesh and I'll key the position and the rotation of that. And then I'll go halfway through the animation. Let's move it down a little bit and let's rotate it a little bit more. Yeah, that should be fine. And then I'll just key this position and rotation again. And then I'll go to the end of the animation. And you can see it's already kind of looping back and forth. All right, so if I play this, it looks okay. Uh, it's a little, ro little robotic. So if I select these and I go over to easing and I right click and I select in out, that'll improve the quality of it a little bit. Uh, so now we want an attack animation. Uh, we want it to, we're gonna make it swing horizontally across the camera. So let's stop this. Uh, go new animation, call it attack. And let's rotate this here. So I want it to be almost horizontal want it to be kind of in the middle of the viewport here. And I'm gonna want it to kind of swing out in front of him like this. So that seems fine. Now here it's out of the viewport, which is pretty good. So I'll just position it right here. And let's make this 0.7 seconds long. 
So for the attack animation, the weapon mesh, let's key the position. I'm not gonna create reset tracks here. Uh, position and rotation. And we also want to key the weapon pivot here. Uh, rotation of that. And uh, in order to make the animation of him swinging in front, we're just gonna take the weapon pivot and make it rotate so that it goes across the entire camera. And <laughs> make sure you have it positioned at the end first. So I'll do that again, and then I'll key that rotation. And I'm going to uh, so click that first rotation keyframe and select that in out easing again. So that's what it looks like. And that looks just fine to me. So let's save that. Uh, first, let's take a look. Yep, so we can see the idle animation there, but let's make it so that when you press the attack input, the player actually swings. So uh, we're gonna need a reference to the animation player. Already far player equals uh, animation player. Uh, and then in the process function, if input is action, just pressed attack and a player dot play attack. So now the attack animation will play, but what we want is we want the mesh to go back to the idle animation when it's done. So let's go to the animation player and let's hook up the animation finish signal to the player. And here we'll check uh, if anim name is equal to attack, uh, play the idle animation as soon as that is done. Uh, whoops, and player dot play idle. Okay, so now let's take a look. Okay, that's pretty good. Now it's a little jarring how it just kind of teleports between positions. So one other thing I'm going to do is go to the animation player inspector playback options and I'm just going to add a 0.1 second default blend time and that is just going to make those animations blend a little bit more so you can see it kind of move uh, right by itself like that which makes it look a little bit nicer in my opinion. Okay so now we want to add a, a hitbox to this mesh. Uh, I'm going to go back to one viewport and I'll, I'll leave this camera preview here. Uh, animation player, animation. I'm gonna go reset just so it's right here. All right, this weapon mesh. Uh, so to add a hitbox, let's go add an area 3D. And in order to put a collision shape to this area, I'm gonna go to the weapon mesh and I'm gonna create a simplified convex collision sibling, and I'll just drag that right into the <clears throat> area 3D. And I'm gonna increase the scale of this hitbox a little bit on here too. So on the area 3D, I'm gonna to go to transform, scale, I'll just make it 1.1, just so it's a little bit bigger. Uh, and now uh, we want in the player script to be able to access this hitbox, in fact, let's name it hitbox so ready far hitbox equals uh, camera 3b so node path all the way to the hitbox here we are going to make the hitbox monitoring off uh, by default so that when I'm walking around uh, if I bump into something it doesn't register as a hit but when we are playing our attack animation, we will set monitoring equal to true. And then when we go back to idle, we will set monitoring back to false. Uh, and now we just want to create something to test this with. So let's go ahead and make an enemy. Uh, I'm going to make the enemy just an area 3D. Uh, let's give it a 
a mesh so we can see it. So mesh instance 3D. Uh, I'm gonna make it a sphere mesh and I don't want it to be white. So I'll go to material, new standard material, go into the albedo, give it this red look. And let's create the simplified convex collision sibling in here as well. All right, there we go. Uh, oh wait, no, we want to name this enemy. All right, and then also on the root node, I'm gonna go over to groups and I'm going to add it to the enemy group here. So uh, if I drag the enemy scene in here, See, I'll put it right there and drag it up a little bit. Um, we are going to be able to use this hitbox to detect when it hits the enemy. And let's wire it up to just, uh, for now, print out a message that the enemy is being hit. So I'll go to hitbox, signals. Uh, this is an area 3D, so I'm going to be using the area entered signal. But if your enemy was like a, a rigid dynamic body, or a character body, you'd want to use the body entered instead, but I'll be using area entered. Area, right, so let's check to see if it's in the enemy group. So if area is in group enemy, print enemy hit. All right, there's our enemy. So I can swing around and if I swing below the enemy, I'm not hitting him, but when I collide with the enemy, you can see that the hit is registered. So, you know, you could give the enemy like a health value and then, you know, pass in like a damage number or something from the weapon to damage it and then kill it once it hits zero, you know, something simple like that. But, you know, this is just a simple collision-based melee system with some pretty simple animations that I think look pretty good. Uh, and hopefully you found this useful. Thanks for watching.